Does looking at the chords on a lead sheet or a sheet of music leave you with crippling anxiety, robbing you of any ounce of creativity that you thought you might have had? If you're new to this whole world of improv and playing over chord changes, this pentatonic cheat code might be the perfect thing for you. See, I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a secret. Practicing your diatonic scales and arpeggios alone is not the quickest way to get you sounding like a modern contemporary improviser. These two scales get a little bit of a bad rap in the jazz world, but everybody's using them, so you might as well too. Okay, so the two scales that we're going to be talking about today are the major and minor pentatonic scales. As you can decipher from their names, these scales are comprised of five notes and can be related back to their major and natural minor parent scales. What makes these pentatonic scales so useful is that they essentially only use the safe and juicy notes from their parent scales. Let's first take a look at the major pentatonic scale. Its diatonic parent scale is comprised of seven notes as depicted here by the C major scale. So for more an in-depth look at diatonic scales and modes, take a look at my video up here by clicking that link. I really go into a pretty big deep dive and give you kind of all the information you need to understand what diatonic scales and modes are. The juicy notes we will take from this scale to build our major pentatonic are the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth notes. What makes the scale so great is that, as we'll see with its minor counterpart, it mainly comprises chord tones that would be used to construct a major chord as outlined here. Okay, so let's head over to C major's relative minor scale, the A minor scale, and do a little bit of a dive into the minor pentatonic scale. So the juicy notes that we use to form our minor pentatonic are the first, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh notes. It's pretty obvious what makes this scale so powerful when you see that it not only utilizes the root, third, and fifth chord tones of a minor chord, but also incorporates that seventh, essentially making this pentatonic scale a minor seven chord arpeggio with a little extra flair with that fourth scale degree. Now, this is where the magic really starts to unfold. And when we really start to understand why it's so important to practice your major pentatonic scales and your minor pentatonic scales, the full range of your instrument when you're first starting out learning these scales. When we put the C major scale and the A natural minor scale right next to each other with the pentatonic notes highlighted, something becomes very obvious. They use the same notes, though we're using different scale degrees from each scale to construct each pentatonic scale. The notes you incorporate into each scale are the same. So if you don't want to create twice the work for yourself when trying to get these scales under your fingers, start with the major pentatonic scale, practice it in the full range of your instrument in all 12 keys. And then when you start working on your minor pentatonic scale, it should feel like something you've already done before because, well, you have. You're playing all the same notes. I mean, take a look at these. We're just basically starting on a different note of the scale. But here's the real magic of these pentatonic scales. They can be used over so many different types of chords. Due to the notes that both the major and the natural minor pentatonic scales use, they essentially circumnavigate most of the avoid notes that we find in a lot of different tonality types. Let's take a look at this figure here. These are all of the diatonic seven chords that can be built off of each scale degree of the major scale. The idea here is simple. If you see a minor chord, you will use the minor pentatonic with the same tonic or first note. If it is a major chord, you will use the major pentatonic. This only tells part of the story as each one of these chords has a mode associated with it, which is essentially its own unique scale that should be used when playing over the correlating chord. If you don't have all of your modes under your fingers or have yet to spend a lot of time understanding them, this pentatonic trick can help you jump into the world of improv without playing a bunch of wrong sounding notes. Okay, so let's really understand why this pentatonic trick works so well. We're gonna take a look at some of the modes here, some of the correlating chords, and we're really gonna see why these pentatonic scales are so useful. So we've already compared a pentatonic scale to the first mode of the major scale, the Ionian mode which gives us a major seven chord. This tonality is one that we would play a major pentatonic scale over, as you might expect. So let's dive into the second mode of the major scale, which is the Dorian mode. This is a minor scale and is a tonality in which we would play a minor pentatonic scale over. As you can see here, when you compare the D minor pentatonic scale to this D Dorian scale, it utilizes the one, three, four, five, and seven of the scale, but stays away from Dorian's unique note, the major six. If you're not sure if you're in a Dorian mode or a natural minor Aeolian mode, this scale degree is going to be a pretty nasty sounding mistake if you get the mode wrong. 
Suppose you see a minor 7 chord with a 6 or 13 in the chord symbol. In that case, this would be a dead giveaway that you're to use the Dorian tonality and free to use that major 6 scale degree in your solo. But more times than not, you will see a regular minor 7 chord within the chord progression, and unless you can decipher, based on the other chords, that this is a 2 chord in a major progression, or a 4 chord in a natural minor progression, just playing a minor pentatonic scale over this chord type is going to make you sound just fine. If you build a chord off of the third scale degree, you're going to get a minor 7 chord. This is also where we find the Phrygian mode, which is a minor scale. So yes, you guessed that this is going to be another tonality that we're going to play the minor pentatonic scale over. The mode from this scale degree in C major is the E Phrygian mode. Compared to the E minor pentatonic scale, it again avoids all its spicy notes like the flat 2 or flat 9 and the flat 6 or flat 13. Okay, on to the fourth scale degree, which is the Lydian mode, which produces a major 7 chord. So, as you guessed it, we are going to be using a major pentatonic scale over this mode. As you can see here, the major pentatonic scale works perfectly over this tonality since it avoids that sharp 4. Once again, if you know this is acting as a 4 chord in a major progression or a 6 chord in a minor progression, that sharp 4 will sound really cool, and you should definitely use it. But if you're not sure, stick to the major pentatonic scale and you're going to sound just fine. Alright, if you stuck with me this far, go ahead and crush that subscribe button down below because we are heading to the Mixolydian or 5th mode of the major scale, which gives us the dominant chord. Technically, this is a major scale, the Mixolydian mode. It has a major third in it. Comparing the G Mixolydian scale to the G major pentatonic scale, we can see that it perfectly avoids the one spicy note of this mode which is that flat seven scale degree. Okay, so we've already been talking about this mode because this is the natural minor scale or the Aeolian mode. This six scale degree produces a minor seven chord that sometimes will have a flat six or a flat 13 in the chord symbol, indicating that a natural minor tonality can be used over it. More often than not though, you will see a minor seven chord and unless you know it functions as a six chord in a major progression or a one chord in a minor progression, stick with the minor pentatonic so you don't end up playing the wrong sounding six scale degree as this can cause some unwanted dissonance in your playing that you may not be intending on using. If we build the chord off of the 7th scale degree, we get something pretty unique. It's called the half diminished chord. This is also where we find the Locrian scale or the Locrian mode. The Locrian mode has a minor 3rd scale degree, so we would think, all right, let's use the minor pentatonic scale over it. But when we compare B Locrian with its B minor pentatonic scale, we can see that we run into a little bit of a problem as the 5th scale degree is lowered in the Locrian scale. So a good workaround whenever you see a half diminished chord is go to the third of the chord. In this case, we have the note D. Use D as the new tonality for your minor pentatonic scale. So play a D minor pentatonic scale over a B half diminished chord. What's great is you're going to hit most of the chord tones of the B half diminished chord, but you're going to also hit a couple of the upper, upper structure notes, which is going to sound really cool over this tonality. As you can see, this pentatonic cheat code works over a lot of different situations. It's a great way to get a ton of mileage out of only two different types of scales, especially when you're first getting into this whole improv game and playing over chord changes. It's an easy way for you to sound like you're playing along with the chord changes. I will warn you though that if you rely on pentatonic scales too much, your solos might start sounding a little flat and a little simplistic. The easiest way to combat this is to try to incorporate as many of those different notes, notes within the modes we were talking about as soon as you can, as soon as you can start understanding how to do so appropriately. So the easiest way to combat your solo sounding a little simplistic now that you're using pentatonic scales in them is the pentatonic scale plus chord alteration method. It's pretty simple. Anytime you see a major chord, use a major pentatonic scale. Anytime you see a minor chord, you use a minor pentatonic scale, just like what we've been talking about. But whenever you see any chord alterations, incorporate those notes within your solo as well. The dominant chord is the easiest one to do this with, as it is a major triad with a minor 7. Play your major pentatonic scale over this chord, but use the minor 7 in your solo, as that extra bit of tension will sound great.
thank you for watching this video. I really hope it inspires you to start using pentatonic scales within your own playing. If you want to take your saxophone skills to the next level, I invite you to join my saxophone academy. If you see a link down in the description below, it means that I'm still taking students on. Go ahead and click that link and sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one call with me where we will talk about all of your hopes and dreams with the saxophone and how my course might best help you to achieve them. This course is a culmination of my 15 plus years now of performing with various different bands, both as a spontaneous sit-in as well as a functioning member of the band for many years and is all the information that I think that you will need to basically do the same thing. The course is designed to take your music theory understanding and fill in all of the cracks and give you a strong foundation that you'll be able to build upon for the rest of your music career. Go ahead and click that link, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one call. Let's talk more about this. And I really look forward to both meeting you and working with you here soon.